So I just wanted to talk quickly about a game I found interesting from my recent challenge top eights with this particular build of mono red in standard. Uh, I, I'm calling it mono red, but it does splash green for pop hatch formation in the sideboard for the demons matchup and any other matchup that use, uses enchantments or creatures with flying that we need to destroy. Um, pretty straightforward. The only things I consider interesting are playing Screaming Nemesis basically over uh, Slickshot Showoff. But Screaming Nemesis has turned out to be just an absolute house in the mirror uh, where I think it really shines and it's just an all around good card for shutting off life game. Um, the mouse package with Heartfire Hero, Ember Heart Challenger, and Manifold Mouse goes nuts and it's pretty good. So starting game one here, I am on the draw against an unknown opponent. I open up with a pretty decent starting seven. And I'm going to keep that. Opponent leads on Dark Slick Shore Spyglass Siren, so I know they're on Demir of some sort. There is two builds of Demir at this point. One important thing that I forgot to mention when this started is that my opponent mulliganed to six cards. Uh, and being on the play, that basically means that we start with a two card advantage on my opponent. And that becomes important because the mid range deck is built on one for ones. So if I can maintain this card advantage through the game, I'm going to be in a very good spot as the game goes on. So they cut down my Swiss Pier, get in for one, no big deal. Next turn, following up with Ember Heart Challenger, getting in for two trading damage back and forth at this point my opponent deploys a deep cavern bat another one for one i have two removal spells in hand so that bat well sometimes it can be an it is annoying because now i have to have to use a removal spell on the bat it's not the end of the world opponent does a good job here taking the shock over the lightning strike which makes means i have to use more mana to get rid of the bat can't be mana efficient and then they find, with their remaining mana, they map onto the Spyglass Siren, revealing a go for the throat. So I now know that this Ember Heart Challenger is not long for this world. Opponent is going to untap and can just go for the throat, the Ember Heart Challenger. Um, at this point, I have a couple different lines. I could have Rock Faced Village the Ember Heart Challenger to see what I flip. Um, I could have even done that before playing a land to see if I flipped the lands. However, if I did go for that line and I flip over a two drop or even a three drop, then that is now a card that I can't play. Um, this is important because I have three lands in hand currently. I'm flooding out, right? So I need my cards to be impactful on the board. So I decided to just go straight to combat attack with the ember heart challenger i could i could have lightning striked there in combat to get the prowess trigger and get more damage in however at this point i am worried about having to use this lightning strike for something a lot more meaningful like maybe even an unstoppable slasher um that would really put a stone wall and let them go to town with these uh, army of flyers that they're slowly growing so i decided to leave it up on opponent's turn, they're going to go straight to combat and attack with everything. At this point, I do decide to lightning strike the bat, uh, just because I don't want the life gain, and I'm going to have to do it anyways. So I will do that here. And then now I do get the shock back in hand when I do that. And you might think that I want to shock one of these other flyers to stop the damage coming through. However, I'm not really worried about that at the this point right in the damage race i am likely going to win that as the red aggro deck my damage output should be much greater than the blue black mid-range deck what i am worried about right now is this map token if i use the shock now that gives them free reign to map onto the spyglass iron and get some card advantage so I decide to just let this damage through. Opponent go for the throats, the Ember Heart Challenger. We get to my end step. Now I've successfully stopped them from mapping this turn. They haven't used all their mana. 
and so to be mana efficient i do end up using the shock now so now they're left with a 1-1 one, one flyer one card in hand and i'm at 13 life so i am not under pressure right now even with three lands in hand i do need to start drawing something good and i end up drawing an ember heart challenger which is pretty good so i can play a land play the ember heart challenger now here I could also rock face village the Emberheart Challenger for one extra point of damage. However, that means that the card I get off the top of the library, I'm not going to be able to use, right? Because I already played a land, so even if it's a land, it would basically just be milling one card. And usually that's not important because the top card of your deck can be anything. But here I decide that the one damage is not worth it, and I just go straight to attacks. I get in for two and pass the turn. So now here's the important part, right? Now that I think my opponent knows I'm just lands in hand from the bad, because I've been trying a lot, I don't recall, but now they map and reveal a go for the throat and then play a restless reef. They would have played the restless reef last turn if they had it in hand. So that wasn't the card. So they drew that this turn. If I had let them map last turn, they would have mapped, revealed the Restless Reef, put it into hand, played it a turn earlier, and had an untapped, extra untapped land, and then this turn drawn the go for the throat to immediately kill my Ember Heart Challenger, and now I get no value off of it. Now they have to wait a turn to use the go for the throat. So very important that me managing my opponent's resources has put me in a better spot in this game. So if we go to my next turn, I end up drawing the Screaming Nemesis. And this, again, is pretty lucky because the top card of the deck can be anything. But if I had activated the Rock Face Village last turn, I would have revealed the Screaming Nemesis, go straight to exile, see you later, bud. It gets even better when I Rock Face Village this turn and end up revealing another Rock Face Village, a land which I would have drawn if I had done it last turn. But now I can play the land, play the Screaming Nemesis. Now I have two threats, and I have one removal spell coming next turn. I get in there. They did end up draw having the Fairy Mastermind in hand at the time, so that trades with the Ember Heart Challenger, trades with the Screaming Nemesis, go for the throat. Now I draw an em So now at this point, I'm basically just top decking. My opponent is top decking. Um, is a race, but the Emberheart Challenger really comes in clutch for letting me get uh, some card advantage going. I reveal a shock and even get rid of their clock back. And this game's really going to be my favorite, but it's still tight. They draw a land, which activates the Restless Reef, but again, I do get lucky and draw the Witch Stalker's Frenzy, even revealing another one off the top. So now they can't make a blocker at all because I just kill it, so they have to take three here and use their fountain port for some other kind of value. End up making a treasure. And this game's pretty much wrapped up at this point. They draw another land, uh, unfortunately, for their opponent, and I draw a creature. And at this point, it is lethal. I can play the Hired Claw, uh, have basically two, three twos uh, when I use the Rock Face Villages, um, and they only have possible one blocker or they end up drawing a card with the Fountain Port, uh, but that could only be one removal spell. So this game really came down to being able to use my resources effectively and also using my resources to prevent my opponent from using their resources. If I had let them map earlier in the game, um, I would have been a lot less deep into my library and my opponent would have been deeper into theirs to have this restless reef coming in for attacks much earlier um killing my ember heart challenger earlier before i can get the card advantage on it so i felt like that game was pretty interesting i felt pretty happy with it at the time i just thought it was an interesting game that i'd share with you guys